Is Arizona basketball or football more likely to win the Big 12? Might have a surprising answer. You are Locked On Wildcats, your daily podcast on the Arizona Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, now we got a lot to get to this show, but first of all, thanks for uh, making Locked On Wildcats your first listen of the day. All right, now we are going to talk about Arizona, Arizona basketball, Arizona football. More likely to win the Big 12. That is the question that I think a lot of people are wondering, and I think it's a very, very good question, by the way. This show is brought to you today. By game time, check it out. All right, now, with Arizona football. Arizona football, in my opinion, oh, by the way, download the game time app. Use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Okay, now, I think with Arizona, Arizona football is not going to be as good as Arizona basketball this year, in my opinion. But there, I think the question is, where are, uh, you know, which team is more likely to win the conference? And I think it's a very fair question because both of them are obviously, both of them are actually in pretty good positions, I think, when you start arguing about it, when you start looking at it. And I think the uh, the one thing is you want, uh, you want uh, you know, if you're an Arizona fan, you're like, all right, well, you know, um, I guess we're a football school too. So let's talk about that. With football. Arizona, I believe, is going to be ranked somewhere around 23rd, 24th in the country, something like that. I don't know that it's going to be that far off, somewhere in that, uh, somewhere in that realm. And watching them, it's going to. There shouldn't be any reason that they shouldn't be ranked that in that capacity. You got the, uh, you got the quarterback, obviously. And Noah Fafita, I will put Noah Fafita against pretty much any, against pretty much any quarterback in the country for a variety of reasons. And I think that the big thing is that uh, he just is a winner. And when I say that he is a winner, you just know that that dude just wins football games. Look at it last year with no. Look at it last year when Jaden Delora, when Jaden Delora was uh, in. Jaden Delora wasn't a bad quarterback, but at the same time, you weren't really going to win a lot of games with Jaden Delora. He'd run around, he'd throw the football around the field, and then he would probably end up, um, you know, not necessarily winning you a game, but he was good enough to win you some games. With Noah Fafita, he comes in, and then immediately things start to change, and things start to change in a big way, in a real hurry. And and it, and it started fairly simply. The first thing he did was he took the easy passes. And I think you're going to see that in the Big 12. With a year under his belt, I think Noah Fafita is going to look even better than he's looked before. Because, again, you've got a season now of live reps. I think with uh, I think with Noah... The one thing that you got to look at is where is he in the uh, where is he going to be then like what is his upside? I think that uh, you know you look at a lot of a lot of players and you're like all right well they've peaked. I don't think that Noah Fafita's peaked. I think a lot of people are like well you know how much better can he really get? And I think that's probably a fair question. But when the question comes to you know has he peaked? No. There are still some plays that I think he wished he had back. And look at last year too with the the. You know, if, if Noah Fafita had started the whole season, I think there's a good chance that Arizona would have beat Washington. I think there's a real a realistic chance of that. So, the quarterback set, and you look around the conference you, and in the Big 12, you got a lot of really good quarterbacks. We talk about this. You talk about Jaden Daniel or Jalen Daniels. You talk about you talk about uh, you know a Rocco Beck. You talk about a Shadur Sanders. You talk about uh, Avery Johnson. I think is a real question mark, um, but. Uh, you know, there's a lot of really good quarterbacks in this conference, but Arizona's right there at the top, and I think you got a quarterback that it's easy to see you winning the conference with. So there's that. Then you look at the running game. Now, listen, I was probably a little bit wrong in the past. I don't think the running game is as good as, say, Oklahoma State's with Ollie Gordon or, you know, maybe even K-State's, Kansas, et cetera, et cetera. But the running game is solid, and I expect with Quali Conley, with Ja'Cory Krosky Merritt, for that to continue to be the case. The O-line, too, is the O-line should be solid. I don't really look at this. I don't really look at this and say that um, Arizona has a massive weakness really anywhere. Now, it might be depth. But 
well, you know, we'll get to that in a second. But the uh, the wide receivers, obviously, you got T Mac. I'm a big fan of Malachi Riley, and I'm also a big fan of you know the offensive line. Um, you got to be able to get that one other offensive line uh, position uh, figured out. And I think if you get that other offensive line position figured out, then I think you're going to be in some pretty good shape. So we will find that one out, though. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not exactly sure where that, uh, you know, where that uh, that real sign, that real weakness is. So we will uh, we will see that now defensively. Like I said, I like the starting. Uh, I like the starting 11. I think the starting 11 is solid. Um, when I look at uh, you know when I look at the you know the defensive line, I think Kevon Darton's going to be a I think Kevon Darton's going to be a beast for Arizona, and I think that uh, I think a defensive tackle. I think when you're looking at a uh, Isaiah Johnson, I think when you're looking at you know a Chuba May, a uh, Bear Anderson, I think you're solid across the board. Big question I got is where are you going to get those defensive end pass rushes from? And that was something that Arizona did a really really good. Uh, a really, really good job at was being able to rotate players in and out. I don't know if Arizona's got that this year. We'll find out. But overall, I think the starting rotation is good. The starters are good. And linebacker, you got Jacob Manu. Obviously, he's a stud. But I think you got question marks at uh, other positions. And, you know, I think that that can be eliminated to a certain extent by bringing in somebody like a Genesis Smith, bringing him closer to the box, which is what I absolutely expect to happen. I think with Genesis Smith, he is going to be closer to the box, and he should be closer to the box. Kind of that Roy Williams type, kind of that Roy Williams type safety where, you know, not maybe great in coverage, but good enough, but you can get him into the box, and then you're then he's a total stud. Um, then defensively, on the defensive backs, I think they're pretty much equipped to be able to handle anything. I love, you know, from trading Stooks to uh, to Cario Davis. I think Marquise uh, Groves Killebrew is really going to surprise some people. Then you got the three safeties. You got Owen Goss as well. I think that Arizona, I think Arizona is underrated at this point. I really do. And I know that there's questions about Brent Brennan, and I get all those. But I have a very difficult time seeing Brent Brennan falling flat on his face. I don't see that one occurring. As a matter of fact, I would be stunned if that. Now, maybe he doesn't have the uh, total upside that some of these other guys do. But um, I do think that, uh, I think it's fair to say that this team, uh, I think this team's going to be ready to rock and roll. I don't really have many concerns, and like I said, as far as kicking goes and stuff, the uh, you know I love Tyler Loop. I think Tyler Loop is uh, Tyler Loop is a breath of fresh air on the, for this team, and because I think I know, I think I know with uh, with Tyler Loop exactly what I'm going to be able to get, and that is going to be a consistent. That is going to be a consistent field goal kicker whose leg is actually a little bit underrated. When you watch Tyler Loop, you know that his uh, he can really uh, you know he can kick the ball. So there's not a lot of question marks on this team. And I look around the conference, and there's nobody that I'm really scared of. Now there's teams that are very very good, obviously, but there's not one team where you're just like, oh gosh, man, I hope we got to stay away from them, or there's going to be absolutely no chance. I mean, Oklahoma State. Really cool. Alan Bowman doesn't do a ton for me. Um, you know, Kansas State, obviously, you got some questions with Avery Johnson. Uh, is he going to be good? I think he will, but I don't think that anybody knows that. Jalen Daniels, kind of the same thing. If Can he stay healthy at Kansas? Obviously, Lance Leopold has done a very good job there. And then Kyle Whittingham. I think with, the, I think with uh, Cam Rising, I think the question is, can he stay healthy? If Cam Rising can stay healthy, then I think you're in really good shape. But we don't know. We haven't seen anything to in, uh, indicate that Cam Rising is going to be able to stay healthy, and I think that's a big question mark. Now, we're going to talk about the basketball aspect here in a second, but first, game time. All right, check out the game time app today. Download the game time app. Here's the deal. Use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. You can go to a bad rock concert. You can go to uh, anything you want check it out uh, game time download the game time app today another one of these ones where you will thank me later on it my friends because it works i can tell you a lot of people that have saved some money and saved some heartache by just using the game time app again check it out download the game time app today use code locked on for twenty dollars off your first purchase terms do apply again game time check it out
Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Mike Luke. All right, now, I think when it comes, this is where, to me, it's kind of fascinating. When it comes to Arizona football, um, I don't know that they necessarily have quite the upside that Arizona basketball does. I also don't know that, but I also don't know that they don't. So that's something that we need to, uh, we need to uh, you know, start out from there with. I don't know that they don't. So there's, uh, there's certainly that. But... You know, as good as the Big 12 is, and I think it's super underrated when it comes to basketball or football, you know, there's not, there's just not a team where you're like, oh, 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 that's going to be a really difficult one. I mean, there are difficult ones, but you're like, I don't know about this one. You know, there are games like that in basketball. We're going to get to that in a second. But Arizona, in my opinion, should be able to compete for a Big 12 championship in football in year one. Um, you've got the pieces, you've got the outline of the roster, and it's going to be up to Brent Brennan and his staff to be able to make this one happen. If they make this one happen, then I think you're in pretty good shape. And I think we're going to know a lot more about Brent Brennan. Now, moving over to Arizona basketball. Um, listen, with the uh, Arizona basketball and the Big 12, that is a different animal than the uh, because the Big 12 is the best basketball conference in the country, and I don't even think that it's close. You look around the uh, conference, you've got Kansas, you've got uh, Kansas probably going to be preseason number one. You've also then you've got Baylor, you've got Houston, you've got a lot of different, uh, you got a lot of different squads. And they're all, like I said, they're all pretty good. Um, again, you're probably outside Arizona, you're probably going to have four preseason top 10 teams. Um, and they return a lot. You look at Kansas. I expect Kansas to be significantly better, even though you lost uh, Kevin McCuller, because now you've got, you got KJ Adams back, you got Hunter Dickinson back, you've got, uh, now you got AJ Storr, you've got Zeke Mayo, you got Dewan Harris, you've got, um, you've got uh, the kid from uh, The Shooter, I'm trying to remember his name from blah, 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 you, you get it. They got, they got the five-star big off the bench, you got a lot of different dudes. Um, then you look at Houston, yes, they lost Jamal Shedd, and I'm very curious to see how that plays out. Bringing in Milos Uzon, I don't know is going to... Uh, you know, is going to alleviate the concerns that maybe some people have. But either way, Milos Uzon is a he's he's competent. But you saw last year with Jamal Shedd that when he wasn't in the game, they had a very, very difficult time scoring. Look at that Duke game, for example. But the other ones I think where it's interesting. You've got Iowa State, they return essentially everybody. They've also got a uh, they've also got a home court advantage that's pretty much uh, second to none in the country. It's really really good. Baylor, VJ Edgecombe, or Edgecombe, learn the name now, my friends, because he is very very good. VJ Edgecombe. Now, the other one that. Uh, I think, and then there's some other ones that I think are going to be fascinating to keep an eye on. But Arizona is going to be right in that mix. I think with Arizona, the one thing though, you're like, all right, how are you going to uh, handle now this huge step up in competition? And let's be honest, this is a massive step up in competition for the University of Arizona going into the Big 12. Like I said, in out of conference stuff, Tommy Lloyd's handled or er, acquitted himself very well. You look at Duke, you look at Michigan State, you look at Alabama, you look at a lot of different schools. He's acquitted himself very well I think the one question mark though is how is that going to work then come big 12 play where you are dealing with a like where you're basically it's game in and game out you're dealing with the same big time entities and teams that have been there before they're used to it Arizona I think it's going to be just fine, but you're going to have a lot of different environments that you're going into that you're not used to I mean when you're talking about Hilton when you're talking about uh, you know fog Allen uh, Utah going into Houston. These are going to be rough and tumble environments, and I think it's something that uh, it's going to be good for Arizona. I also think it's going to be very good for Arizona come NCAA tournament time because they're going to have player, they're going to have situations where you look around, you're like, all right, you know, this isn't uh, this is going to be easy. It's just going to be kind of us against the world, and. I think you can embrace that. But, you know, as far as the Arizona roster goes, I love how it's built to get into the Big 12. The first one is Jaden Bradley, to me, is your quintessential Big 12 point guard. Physical, strong, athletic, uh, defensive-oriented. I think he is going to uh, I think he is going to be the first good point guard of the Tommy Lloyd era because, obviously, Kylan Boswell wasn't that. Kirk Carissa was okay. But these dudes, um, this guy, I think, is cut from a different cloth. I think he's going to be an all-Big 12-type performer. 
at least on the defensive side of the court. Very excited to see what he can do. Then you've also got other dudes that I think are fascinating as well. Uh, K.J. Lewis and Caleb Love. Obviously super excited that Caleb Love is back. And Caleb Love is, uh, Caleb Love I think is somebody that every uh, every fan should be enthused by. Um, by all accounts, he's been a really good guy. Tommy Lloyd and the staff like him a great deal. He can drive to the basket. He can get downhill. He can do a lot of uh he can do a lot of different things. Now, with uh, then you look at K.J. Lewis. The thing with K.J. Lewis, I think that he is very, very, uh, I think he's going to break out in a big a big way. I think he's going to be somewhere around 14 points, five rebounds, four assists, something like that. He is a, he's another player. He just kind of fits in well with what you want to do in the Big 12. Not only does he fit in well with what you want to do in the Big 12, he also is the kind of player that, um, I think it's going to continue to get better, and I think like like Jaden Bradley, I think he's going to embrace that defensive uh, stop that defensive stopper type role, and you need that in the Big Twelve. You need guys that embrace that. There's been years, times in the past where I don't know that Arizona's had guys that have embraced that. Then up front, it's going to be a little bit interesting. Obviously, Keisha Johnson moves out. I got a lot of faith though in Trey Townsend. I think Trey Townsend is going to be very very good for what Arizona wants to do. And not only do I think that uh, Trey Townsend is going to be really good for what Arizona wants to do, I think he's also the player that um, he's going to get a lot of those Umar Ballo leader of men rebounds, where he's just he's just kind of wide and the you know and the ball just kind of comes to him. I think that's something that he is going to ex- uh, excel at. Um, I also think that he's going to be a competent three point shooter. You leave him open, I think he's going to make a shot or two. And I think he's going to live at the free throw line. So those are all going to be interesting ones to watch play out. Then Mo Crevis, big fan of Mo Crevis and what Mo Crevis is doing. With Mo Crevis, just want him to keep improving. And if he keeps improving, then I think Arizona is going to be in great shape. So we'll we'll see that. But overall, I like these the this starting lineup for the Wildcats. I think it's got national championship upside. I also believe with Tobey Awaka coming off the bench, he's somebody that you want in the Big 12. You need somebody that's a little bit more... I think you need somebody that's a little bit more physical, a, one that uh, you know can kind of throw some bows, get some rebounds, and I think that he is better offensively than he was ever able to show under Rick Barnes. I think that's a big part of why what Tommy Lloyd was able to sell him on too is like, listen, man, we uh, you know we do things a little bit differently around here, and look at Keyshaw Johnson. I mean, we've talked about it a ton. Keyshaw Johnson is where Arizona was able to. Uh, you know, I mean, you took a guy that was kind of a junkyard dog and you turned him into a really good player. So, you know, Keyshaw Johnson, definitely, a, a, I think, a good uh, rule of thumb to follow. Then, off the bench again, like I said, Anthony Del Orso. I'm big on Anthony Del Orso. I know that he might not have some great advanced metrics or some stats or whatever the case may be. I think he's going to be a good shooter. Probably not a great defender, but I think he's going to be a competent player for Arizona. Average 20 points per game, obviously, last year. And then last but certainly not least, and the one that I think is going to make the uh, the biggest impact for Arizona is Carter Bryant. Um, Carter Bryant's been very, very good so far in in uh, you know just kind of in workouts and like I said I expect him to kind of be in that KJ Lewis type role where you play 15 16 minutes per game and I think it continues to just kind of go from there and you continue to get better but he is a uh, another dude that um, I think he is going his best years to use that basketball cliche are clearly in front of him I think he's going to be very very good for what Arizona wants to do and somebody that's going to be really good in the Big 12 but the uh, we're going to talk about just kind of then the uh, the differences and everything that plays in but overall I do believe the Tommy Lloyd's team has the ability to be able to be a national championship team. I think they've got that uh, that type of makeup. They also have a much tougher roster, which is something that Arizona, I think, in years past just didn't have, especially when it came to the point guard position. So we're going to talk about that a little bit on the other side. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, now, 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 
with uh, when it comes to Arizona basketball and Arizona football. I don't believe that Arizona football probably has quite the upside this year that Arizona basketball does, but I do think that its upside is drastically underrated. Um, again, I think that they are going to be able to compete with absolutely anybody in the conference. And I think, honestly, if I had to pick a team, <laughs> if I had to pick a team that was, you know, in the Big 12, that's in the Big 12, um, to win that conference, I'm picking Arizona. I'm back in the A here. I got less question marks about them, I think, than any other team. Now, granted, you could say, well, Mike, you got a new coach and all of that. And you know what? You would be totally spot on with that. But at the same time, um, I, I think there's a big enough track record with Brennan to understand that, yeah, he's not going to stink. And that's basically all I need is somebody that I know is competent because in the past we've had coaches that you knew were not competent. And he's obviously been given a loaded roster, so you got to keep that in mind. But I expect him to do really well. And if he doesn't do really well, then I'm going to have some real questions about him and some of his uh, long-term, I guess, prognosis with the uh, with the U of A because he's he's been handed a team that should be able to compete out the box day one game one what they're able to do now in basketball like I said with Lloyd the big thing to me is just the kind of competition you're going to be going against I mean because you're going in to the best conference like I said in the country and even though I love the roster I love the players that you've uh, you got it's going to, I still think it's going to take a little bit of time to be able to, you know, just really acclimate. I could see Arizona honestly finishing third or fourth in the Big 12 and getting a three seed in the NCAA tournament. That's how good the Big 12 is. So I think that's something too to uh, keep in mind. But big thing, I think both of them have a real, real possibility to be able to compete in the uh, in the Big 12 and win the championship. I mean, look at Arizona last year. Arizona in the last year won or won the conference in basketball, won the conference in baseball, and finished 11th nationally in football. I mean, you know, that's that's some pretty good stuff right there. And I look for that to continue. I don't know, like I said, to that a aspect. But Arizona football and Arizona basketball are on very, very sound footing. And, you know, like I said, that's exciting because we've been through a lot of different stuff where you're like, mm, this isn't good. And you know that it's not good. So either way, a good time. Now. Arizona is obviously in the Big 12. That is a very good thing. We're very excited about Arizona going into the Big 12. But, you know, according to some reports, it almost didn't happen. Last year, at this time, we were listening to people, you know, like Canzano and Wilner saying that a deal is right around the table with Apple. With Apple, my friends. Now... Apple just announced that they're going to be cutting back on everything. So um, that probably wouldn't have been a great look if Arizona had hitched their uh, two-way Apple deal that, you know, let's be honest here, was not a good deal. Arizona certainly came out of that one on the right side. We're going to talk a lot about that and just kind of, you know, what – Brett Yormark brings it to the table here when it comes to this because he, again, was savvy and he was able to figure out a lot of things that some other folks weren't able to figure out. So that Apple, deep, that Apple TV deal, like I said, that's going to be something that is going to be interesting to talk about because it just kind of shows you, too, where just kind of the false sources through all of this came from and sometimes never believe what you read in the paper type event. But so again, Arizona football, I find more likely to win the conference in Arizona basketball, even if I think that Arizona basketball is going to be a better, a little bit better product. But, you know, like I said, in the in the Big 12, it's a it's a different animal and we're almost here. But like I said, fans, be excited because you're going to be playing against teams that actually like sports and uh, schools that like sports and fan bases that like sports. But on that note. Very much appreciate you making Locked On Wildcats your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Mike Luke. We will be back with you tomorrow. Bear down and back the A.